Hello everyone, it's Gustavo from Optitune. In today's presentation, we're going to be looking at a very interesting application using our focus to normal lenses. We will go together through the steps of setting up a distance measurement sensor with an autofocus software. So, today's agenda includes a short introduction about our technology. Then, we will look at the step by step explanation of how to program a distance sensor with an autofocus lens. In the end, we also see a demonstration example uh, of such a sensor in action. So here at Optitune, we use our knowledge to provide customers uh, with solution for dynamic light control. Our core product lines are four. We have focus tunable lenses for fast light focusing and defocusing. Then we have laser specker reducers, which are basically oscillating diffusers used in projecting systems to average out speckled patterns that might arise from optically rough surfaces. Then we have XPRs, extended pixel resolution up to liters, which are basically tilting plates used, again, in projecting systems to increase the resolution up to four times the magic one. Finally, we have two-dimensional mirrors for fast beam steering in reflection. As you already anticipated, today we're going to look at the specific application using the focus tunnel. So, but how do they work? Well, the work in principle is very similar to the one of the human eye, and the, uh, but actually allows for much faster focusing performances. The main components of the lens are basically three. We have a container filled with an optical fluid and sealed with an elastic membrane. On top of this elastic membrane is glued lens shaper, which is moved up and down by a voice coil actuator. This up and down movements, which happen very fast, within milliseconds, change the shape of the lens. Another remarkable thing is that the optical power of the lens, the change in optical power of the lens, is linearly dependent on the um, current that is applied to the voice coil, uh, making the device very straightforward and intuitive to use. As a reminder, the optical power in diopters is defined as the inverse of the focal length in meters. So, um, Optitune's approach, liquid lens approach, help to overcome uh, the intrinsic uh, limitation of a fixed, fixed focus optics uh, system, where the working distance range is basically limited by the depth of field. With the liquid lens uh, uh, attached to our machine vision system, we instead have a variable, we can have a large variable working distance, still with a very low F numbers. Um, the range of application in the machine vision realm is quite wide. For example, logistics and robotics can use our lenses in combination with endocentric lenses uh, in the so-called front lens or back lens configurations. Also, more demanding applications can greatly benefit from our technology. For example, manufacturing or material processing um, can use our lens uh, in combination with telecentric lenses or for image, uh, imaging uh, with uh, f theta lenses in laser processing uh, machines. Anyway, regardless of the specific application, a machine vision system that is equipped with an optotune tunable lens can offer several advantages. Together with the already mentioned extended working distance range, we can have fast autofocus, um, uh, uh, faster than a second, and a precise and reliable distance measurement sensor. And I want to stress that this is all in one system without the addition of any extra hardware. Okay, let's now uh, give a, have a close look to the uh, software of how to program a distance sensor, a distance sensor from a software uh, perspective. Before diving into the details uh, of the software, I would like to show you the hardware with which we have been experimenting and validating all the things that I will show you uh, in the next slides. Um, we have a, a CMOS camera, a fixed focal length lens with a focal length of 50 mm in this case, and in front is screwed our EL1640TC, which is our large clear aperture lens, which is widely used in machine vision application. Now, the target is uh, now in this example white cardboard, but as we will see later, this can be any material. The working distance is defined, as usual, as the distance from the uh, expected object 
to the optical system. Okay, so in order to program an efficient uh, distance sensor, we need first to develop two tools. We need to program an autofocus, then we need to calibrate our system, and of course this calibration will be different for different systems, but um, this calibration routine must be done only once for a certain system. Then we can use these two tools and program a distance sensor. Okay, so let's now look at the autofocus program flow. We will do this with the help of the block diagram. So let's suppose also that we have our system that is ready to acquire images. What we will do, we will place object at an arbitrary distance. Then we will set the optical power of the lens to its minimum value. For example, for the AL1640, we have that the minimum value could be minus two adopters. Then we will define coarse step size. Again, for example, it could be like 0.4 diopters. Then we acquire our first image, we calculate the contrast of such image, and then we need to remove to the next uh, point. So basically now we would have acquired an image at the point minus two diopters. Now the first decision comes about, we have basically to check whether we are in the coarse or the fine step size regime. Of course at this point we haven't defined yet any fine, step size, so we are definitely in the course step size. And now we will also check whether the optical power, the current optical power, is smaller or bigger than the maximum optical power. Now, the maximum optical power, for example, for the ER 64 again, is three, could be three, uh, plus three diopters. Now, um, in case we are still, the optical power is smaller than the max, what we will do, we will go again through the acquisition block. And we will do this up to the point where we reach the maximum optical power of the lens. Uh, now, when we have reached this optical power, we will uh, find uh, ourselves in a situation like depicted in the bottom left. We have scanned over the whole optical power range of the lens, and we will acquire all the, all the images, and one of these images uh, will have the higher contrast, the highest contrast of them all. At this point, we will basically define a smaller interval around this point, this optical power point. We will define a fine step size, which could be, for example, 0.04 diopters, so 10 times less than the coarse step size. Then we will set the optical power to the minimum of this just defined interval. And we will go again uh, through the image acquisition block. Again, uh, specular as before, we will basically now check where the step size is fine or coarse, and of course at this point we are in the fine step size regime, and we will see again, we will check again whether the optical power is smaller than the maximum optical power we have defined for the fine sweep. In case this is true, we will go again and again through the acqui uh, image acquisition block. At the point where the optical power now is bigger than the max of the fine sweep, we are basically done, we will plot all the points that we have acquired and we will fit a Laurentian model to this data. The maximum of this Laurentian curve will be the best focus. So now we can move the lens to that specific optical power and we will have our object in focus. I want to point out that the power of this approach is that one does not need to acquire the image with the best focus, but this is given by the maximum the fit. So here we have an example of a run of such an autofocus routine with on the top the images taken at different optical powers. Now even though we have to acquire a lot of images uh, with, with this approach, this uh, autofocus sort software turns out to be quite fast because our lenses are very fast. They can focus within milliseconds. Usually the time run the autofocus, it's on the order or even smaller than a second. Okay, so now that we have programmed our autofocus, we need to calibrate our system. So uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to put the object at the maximum working distance, which also corresponds to the minimum optical power. For example, it could be minus two diopters. Okay. Now we will create an empty lookup table of the form optical powers versus working distance. Um, now, we will measure the, uh, the distance at which the object is by some external mean, and we 
will provide this distance to the program. At the point, we can either perform the autofocus with just the program, or we can also set manually the optical power to have the, uh, the, the object in focus. Of course, these two um, actions are equivalent. Now we will save this point, optical power versus working distance, in our lookup table. Now, if the optical power is still smaller, smaller than the maximum optical power, what we will do is basically we will move the object closer and closer to the system, and we will run again this loop, the calibration loop, until we get to the point where the optical power is bigger than the maximum optical power, or the working distance is smaller than the minimum working distance. At this point, we will be basically done with the calibration, and we will have our lookup table file, which is uh, filled up. Now, uh, for example, for the system I showed you before, this is how the uh, optical power versus uh, working distance uh, looks like. Of course, the more uh, data points one acquires, the more accurate the calibration will be. Now, finally, we are ready to look at the distance sensor program flow. So, now what we do, we're going to put an object at an arbitrary distance. We're going to read out the calibration file that we just created, and we're going to create a model from the data points. For example, here we have that the, the data points have uh, a trend that looks like 1 over x, or the form of 1 over x. And this is typical for a front lens configuration. Uh, if you one would have, were to have a back lens configuration, this um, the relationship would be more uh, linear. Now, we will run the autofocus and read the corresponding optical power. We will insert this read out optical power into the system, into the calibration, and we will uh, retrieve our uh, distance measurement. Now, of course, one can move the object to another position and run another distance measurement. Do another autofocus and read out, retrieve um, the, uh, the distance uh, by looking at the optical power at which the object is in focus. So uh, now one, one might wonder, well, but how accurate, how repeatable is such a system? Well, it turns out that the system, uh, this approach, is even uh, is repeatable better than the depth of field. Um, here, how did you examine this? Well, uh, we took uh, four specific distances and we ran 10 independent distance measurements at each of these distances. Then we plot the mean distance given by the distance sensor on the x-axis and on the y-axis we uh, uh, plot the deviation from this mean both in terms of maximum and minimum deviation and also standard deviation. And you can see here that the black and the grey bars are much smaller than the red bars which represent the depth of field, telling us that distance measurements are actually more precise than the depth of field, and this at also at quite low f numbers, which is in, case, in this case was 2.8. Okay, as already uh, mentioned before, this uh, uh, approach, the distance sensor, works very well for almost uh, any material. Uh, and we found uh, this out basically by uh, seeing that autofocus requires only minimal structure to function properly. So uh, we have done tests on paper, uh, stainless steel, brass, PCBs, and we've seen that for all these materials uh, the distance sensor works very well. The only problems we had were with white ceramics, um, and this is probably because uh, for uh, a lack of contrast, a lack of structure. Okay, so we are finally ready to look at the demonstration video of such a sensor in action. Um, so here you see the whole system. On the left we have basically the machine vision system with the camera and the lens setup. On the right we have the computer. Here we have a detail of the fixed focal length lens and the optical lens. And now you can see basically uh, my colleague that is uh, stacking up objects uh, into the object plane. And you can see how uh, reactive is the, the software which basically first puts the image in focus and then reads out, uh, like tells, the distance of the object. Again, we can uh, do this one more time, different object is stacking more and more, and you see how fast this reacts. The, the height of the object updates within a second. And again, this works for a different 
uh, materials. Okay, the presentation is over. Thanks for watching and take care.